Welcome to Technical Founders. My name is Carlos Lara, AI Technical Founder, and today we will learn how to perform linear regression with Keras in TensorFlow. Specifically, the problem that we'll be solving today is building a model, Keras model in TensorFlow that can convert temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And the, for, the formula is, so the degrees in Fahrenheit is equal to the degrees in Celsius times 1.8 plus 32. So it's a simple linear linear function where the slope is 1.8 and the y-intercept is 32. And we want to build a model that given the, the inputs, which is Celsius, and the outputs, which are Fahrenheit, so that's the, the features and the labels, it will learn what is the optimal value? Uh, what is the slope here? We'll learn this value 1.8 and the y-intercept of, of, of 32. Now, first, we'll go ahead and import our dependencies. So we'll import TensorFlow here and just set, um, set the verbosity here so we're only logging error messages. And we're also importing NumPy to help us represent our data as highly performant lists. Now, here we'll set up our training data. So here, our Celsius is we'll, we'll just assign it to a, to a NumPy array, and we'll just assign some some values here. This is just a simple example of, a, of supervised learning here with Keras, and we'll define a, the, the type here, which is float. We want these uh, these to be float types. So these are the features, and then the labels will be the the corresponding Fahrenheit value. So minus forty cel uh, degrees Celsius is minus forty degrees Fahrenheit, and and so on. Now here we'll just actually print out uh, just these the, the degrees in Celsius they're corresponding in in Fahrenheit. Now some 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 terminology here as we said so the feature will be the inputs to our to our model and in this case just a single value here so the degrees in Celsius and then the labels are the output that our model is pr predicting. In this case again a simple value which is the the a single value which is the degrees in Fahrenheit. So we'll go ahead and create our model here, and we'll create the simplest possible model here as an introduction to Keras and TensorFlow, which is a dense network. And this is very straightforward. With this network will only require a single layer and a single neuron. So here we'll we'll go ahead and, and create a layer we call layer L0, stands for layer zero. So the first one, and which this all we're gonna have right now, and it's we're gonna call tf.keras. So keras is within TensorFlow. So we imported TensorFlow to tf.keras.layers.dense. So we pick out our so we have our layers module and we got we grab our dense uh, layer here, which here you can think of it as just a linear layer. And we specify a couple of parameters here. So the first is the number of units or the number of neurons in that layer. And for this very simple example to illustrate Keras, we're just going to say it has just one unit, one neuron, that layer, and the input shape will just be will just be one one here. It just just takes in a a, a single uh, value here. So this this parameter specifies the input to, to the layer, and this is this the shape is just it's a one dimensional array with one member, and again the units. So feel free actually to to pause here and read and read through this. Now. Let's go ahead and assemble the layers in our model. So let's actually create a variable called model here and assign it to tf.keras.sequential. So the simplest possible uh, model in, in Keras and deep learning here is a sequential model. So just a stack of layers, a sequence of, of layers. And we're, we're, we're going to go ahead and pass in here the actual layer that, 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 that we defined. So it takes in a, a list of layers as an argument, the sequential. Uh, tf.keras.sequential, and we'll just pass in that. Otherwise, we'll just pass in, if we had more, we would just comma separate this list and pass in more. And of course, you can actually just do it, do it all at once here. So define your model and just defi define your your layer right in that in that list argument. Now the next step, so now we have, okay, so we have a, a model with a with a single dense layer with one neuron. So now we're going to compile the model with loss and optimizer functions. So here's very simple for our model. We just call here model.compile, and then we specify two parameters here. There's more parameters, but here we're just, for this simple example, we're just specified two. So first, the loss. So here we have the loss function, th that is a mean squared error, because what problem are we doing? Is this a classification, is the, or is this regression? This is actually a regression problem, because Given an, an input value, we're going to output a value, which is a float, so a continuous value in some in some range. So because it's not a binary or um, like a, a discrete 
value that the, the the model is outputting it's it's it can be in any in a range of con, of of continuous values it's actually a regression problem so we call this linear regression in this case and the the loss function that, that we're going to use for regression is the mean squared error and there's others of course but this would be the the simplest one here and here in with tensorflow keras you it's very simple for the loss parameter you just specify it as a string the mean the mean squared um, error and there's actually a, a mod module in TensorFlow. It's called tf.losses, and it contains uh, all of these all of these functions. So here you can just p pass the fun uh, the function itself, or you can just say th th specify the string name of that function, which is mean squared error. And the second argument here to model.compile is the optimizer. So this is the gradient descent optimizer. And here we're going to to grab uh, from tf.keras.optimizers. We're going to grab Atom, which is very very standard. In practice to use the atom gradient descent optimizer and for the parameter for this gradient descent optimizer is the learning rate and the learning rate can be anywhere real i mean typically between 0 0.001 and 0 0.1 and here we're just picking 0 0.1 for this for this simple example so we have so then we so we just comp compile our model and again feel free to pause here to read about uh, to to see some more uh, documentation on this and now the next step is to train the model. So after we compile the model with our with a loss function, with a gradient descent optimizer, and with the architecture here, sequential model with a layer, and a neuron within that layer, now it's time to train the model. So all we have to do is call uh, the fit uh, method on our model, on our model instance. So model we call model.fit, and we pass in our features, so our input, which is our, our Celsius. We pass in our outputs, which are the, the corresponding values in Fahrenheit, the labels, right? Features labels. And then the, the third parameter here that we're specifying, by the way, there's more, but the, the parameter here uh, is epoch. So how many epochs, how many times we're going to run through all of the, 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 the training data? And we're going to pick 500 epochs for this. Uh, it's a simple example. It's going to run. It runs pretty fast. And we set verbose equals to false, so it doesn't actually print out every epoch uh, what's going on. So it's just kind of easier to uh, to see here for this simple example. So just finishes training training pretty pretty quickly. And let's go, and we we assign the that to a to a history variable. So model dot fit the, the with the output we'll just we'll just assign it to a, to a variable here. And we're going to go ahead and display the statistics here. So display uh, the, the history, our model. So we'll go ahead and import matplotlib, uh, pyplot, as PLT. And if you're in a Jupyter notebook, we're just doing a matplotlib inline, so we can plot here. And we set the X label and the Y labels here. And for for X turns out to be the e, the epoch number, and for Y the loss, the magnitude of the of the of the loss. So we're gonna head, we're going to go ahead and plot. So plt dot plot, and we grab our history here. Dot history, and then we just grab the loss. That's what we're going to plot. We're going to plot the loss as a function of epoch. So as we see, the loss starts at a maximum because the the learnable parameters the internal variables of the network are initialized to random values those weights and biases so it's pretty the loss is pretty high it's not doing well initially but the model acid trains as the 500 epochs starts start to progress the loss quickly decreases and and here just keeps going down going down until it's basically reaching a minimum which is finding the optimal values for this uh for this function the optimal function here that maps celsius to fahrenheit so this is what we expect to see. We expect the network to find as close as possible for the slope, for the weight, uh, 1.8, and for the bias, 32. Again, the weights correspond to the slope, the weight corresponds to the slope, and the bias corresponds to the y-intercept in this linear function. So that's what we have. So let's go ahead and call, and, and again, our model also has a predict function. So as you can see, it's very, very, very simple. Let's go, let's go, let's go ahead real quick. So we define our data as, num, as simple NumPy arrays. We define our, our layer here in Keras, our sequential model. We can even do it all, all at once so that we have our model instance here. We just compile our model, specifying our loss and, and gradient descent optimizer. And, and, we, and then we, we call the fit function on that model instance. It's very, very simple. We can plot that. And then we, also, we can also call the predict method on that model. So model.predict. And we just pass in a, a Celsius value. And let's print that out. Let's see. And the model gives us 211.3, basically. And the actual, the correct answer is 212. So our model is doing really, really well. And this this only takes a, a second or two to train on 500 epochs because it's a very, very simple model. Just a sequential model with one dense layer with one neuron. It's extremely simple. And yet, amazingly, it's able to, to map 
the Celsius to Fahrenheit really, really well. So now let's let's review. Let's look at the layer weights here. So if we print out the the, the internal variables of, of our of our dense layer, which we called L0, and we call the get weights met, a method on that, it's going it's going to print out those 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 weights and biases. In this case, it's just a single weight and in a single bias value here. And the type is float32, so just the floating point numbers. So we have 1.826, so very close to the value of 1.8. And then here for, for the bias, the y-intercept is 28.7, basically. It's not exactly 32, but again, it's, it's pretty close to, to give us some, some good values. And of course, we can change the, the network architecture, make it more, more complex and train for longer, change the learning rate. So there's things there. We can tune hyperparameters here to, to increase, um, the, to make these values, to for the model to find the optimal more optimal values but this is just for this very 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 simple example it's amazing what the network is able to learn because in traditional programming really what we're doing is we're defining the inputs and the function and then we run the function with the inputs and it gives us the output that's traditional programming now with machine learning and deep learning we're specifying the inputs and the outputs and then and then the the neural network is able to find the, that function in between that actually maps those inputs to out to output so it's a it's a different uh, paradigm just extremely uh, revolutionary pretty amazing so now so here and the internal math here and in, in, in this case for this uh, simple uh, neural network it looks the the internal math looks the same as the equation for a line y equals mx plus b for this simple example because we, again we only have one neuron one 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 layer and one input and one one output but uh, again so with additional, if you add additional neurons, additional inputs, and additional outputs, the formula now becomes much more complex, but the idea is the same. Now, just for fun, let's see what happens if we actually add more, la more layers, and then we increase the number of neurons, the number of units in each one of those layers. So what's what's going to happen? So so same thing, we have we, we create our model instance, tf.keras.sequential, and we just pass all of them uh, here, our, our, our dense layer. So it's three layers. Okay, one, the input shape is one, just as before, but now we have four, four neurons. And then the next layer has four neurons as well. So the there's a matrix con connecting these two, these two layers, and it's a four by four matrix because the outputs from the previous layer has to match the, in, the, the inputs from the, from the next layer, so the shapes rather. So we have a four by four matrix here, and then, and then for the first ones connecting the inputs to the dense, it's a one by four, and then at the end, Four to one is a four as a four by one matrix. So we have so we compile our model here again mean squared error for this regression problem. And again we pick the atom optimizer here from tf.keras.optimizers with a 0.1 learning rate. So we fair model. We pass in our features, our labels, epochs, and let's see what we get. So again so. The, the val so we so the value is actually very very similar as before. So what did we get before? Uh, 211.3. Now we're getting 211.75, basically. So it's closer. It's better. So by adding more complexity, by adding more layers and more neurons, the network now has more. You can think of it as degrees of freedom, more internal variables that it can uh, learn to bet to better map. The, the inputs to the outputs. It's a more complex function because now we have a lot more uh, learn, learnable parameters here, those internal variables of, of each dense layer because we have three layers. So if we actually call get weights on each one of those dense layer and we print that out, as you can see now we have 10 variables here for for this for this for the for our first layer, then 11 and 12 for, for, for the next one. So there's it's not just now one, two, or two variables, just one weight and one bias as before in the simplest case. Now we have a lot more variables. Now in practice, you have to iterate here, make sure, because the more layers, the more uh, internal variables you have, the more weights and biases, the more you can overfit. But also if you don't have enough, you can underfit. So you, it's something that you can tune in practice, tune those hyperparameters. But it's again, you can just see how um, it's, it's very, very interesting how you get just a, a more, com more complex matrices encapsulating those those those, va those values here it's not just a simple slope and a, and a y-intercept now it's a more complex function just simply by adding more more layers and more and more units so as we as we can see by the shape of the array we do have a four by one matrix here and for 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 the weights 
and 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 so on. So four four by four here for the weights on the on the second layer, and then four by four by one, four rows, one column, and and, and then you can see uh, the the bias as as well as we're printing everything. So very interesting. So there you go. So just, this is a, an introduction uh, to uh, Keras in TensorFlow in a simple problem of linear regression to to find the function that that converts Celsius, degrees in Celsius to degrees in Fahrenheit. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts, comment below and I will see you next time.